It is difficult to say what is impossible, for the dream of yesterday is the hope of today and the reality of tomorrow. No progress.
Oh, today was supposed to be pretty casual. Oh, the game combined with the condition of these trails. <sighs> Fighting for every step with 35 pounds almost on my back. Oh. I only hiked about four miles today, but um, it was about 4,000 feet of elevation gain. So with a 35 pound, almost backpack, that is kind of rough. It definitely felt like way more than four miles. Um, but I guess that kind of elevation gain mile after mile, I do that to you. I'm in my tent now. I haven't had dinner yet. Um, kind of lost the sun from this valley because um, I'm really close to the ridge. The plan tomorrow is to actually climb that ridge and drop down on the other side. That will all be off trail. Um, I should cross the trail at the top of the ridge, but um, other than that, that whole section will be off trail and then I'll drop down to Blue Lake and pick up on, um, I can't remember the trail number right now, but it's the trail that goes out of Blue Lake and take that up towards Delano Peak. Not sure how far I'll get because I'm not sure how far, how long it's gonna take me to do all the off trail stuff. Uh, but I do intend to get a pretty early start tomorrow, although the sun doesn't rise until after, I think it's 7.39 is sunrise, so I uh, can't get that early of a start because uh, I don't like to hike in the dark. So I'm going to call it a night. It's felt like a very long day, and to be honest, I'm pretty tired, so I'll probably have <sighs> dinner at some point, but I might rest for a little bit first.
The first order of business today was getting water. I had marked a spring on my way into camp that wasn't very far from camp at all. I went back to have another look at that spring this morning and while there is water being produced from it, uh, it's not a high enough flow rate where it doesn't just immediately saturate the ground and become sludge. So in order to get any hydration from that spring, I would probably have to eat mud pies. <laughs> This portion of trail that I'm on now did not have anything else indicated on my topo map, but I was camping next to a dry creek. So I thought I would go walk along the creek for a bit and hopefully come to a pool of standing water. And I did. I got enough for a liter, which is all I need for right now. Um, and now I followed the trail up for just a little bit and I've cut off from the trail. I am doing the cross country portion of my trip today. Hopefully it will work out. I charted a route using Tobo maps and I have it to track on the GPS all trails on my phone. Um, I use the all trails app. My plan is to head up onto that ridge you see behind me. On top of the ridge, there is an ATV trail. It's the Paiute ATV trail. Uh, and I have heard a little bit of uh, ATV noise this morning. So that's a good indicator that I'm headed in the right direction in case I didn't already know that. Um, but yeah, this is, this is the adventure. So I, I hope that it all works out and it will definitely help me build my confidence. There is, there should be a mine up there kind of on the other end edge of the ridge. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Let's go check it out. right there. I wasn't anticipating that. That might be the road actually. I found the road.
it is beret season again and I'm happy about it. <laughs> Sorry if you're shaking a little bit, it's very windy. Can you tell? <laughs> Traveling through my cross country portion of my route, these uh, trails that are here are not indicated on any of the three topo maps that I've been working off. Um, they're not indicated on, well, I've actually looked at four different maps. <laughs> they're not indicated on any of those. But I drew out this route because it was the most sensible way down the ridge line based on the topography from the map. And now that I'm out here doing it, there are most certainly some old roads. These roads, I theorize, are probably from mining. There are a number of mines around here. In the Tusher Mountains, mining was very popular. They would mine alunite, which is used for aluminum and potash, and also uranium. I think these are alunite mines that are right around here. and because I could see on the topo map that there were old mines right on this ridge, I kind of figured I was pretty safe in creating the route here, not just based on the topography, but based on the fact that people had clearly frequently traveled to and from the mines over the years because that's what mining operations require. And not only were they traveling there, but they were having to carry or uh, transport substance out. So yeah, this is actually a lot easier than I anticipated. <laughs> I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad. I wasn't like, oh, I need like, I need it to be really hard hiking. No, I was definitely trying to pick the easiest, most sensible route down. And the fact that my route matches up with a road only proves to me that I did a pretty darn good job of figuring out the best route down. I can kind of see some mountain goat trails up over in here. where I just came from. On camera, it's never, it never looks as steep as it is in real life. But I'm just taking it slow. And I'm about halfway down now, so that's good. Behind me you see Blue Lake and Mount Belknap. I'm not sure I said that right. I seem to say everything wrong in Utah. Uh, I always want to call them the Tishar Mountains and the Sevier River, but they say the Tishar Mountains and the Sevier River. So that could be Belknap behind me or Belknap. I don't know. <laughs> One day I'll find out. 
Um, so it took me about two and a half hours to come down the ridge. I lost about 1,300 feet in elevation just skiing down a scree field. Um, at one point I dropped down into the drainage, had to climb down some small waterfalls. That was sort of the best option at that point. I got out of the drainage and then um, continued down the, the ridge and found the trail. Um, so I picked up a trail that took me around to the back of the lake and I came around to this side here. Thought, this looks like an awfully beautiful spot for a campsite. So here I am. I don't know about you, but me looking at coming down the side of a mountain like that can seem rather impossible. <laughs> Certainly pretty risky, but um, honestly, I did not feel scared at any point. I was getting tired because I didn't take any breaks while coming down. I just had a couple of sips of water here and there, but um, it's not really like the kind of place where you want to stop and try to relax. I had to pull my shoes off at one point because my boots were just so full of rocks that it was hazardous for me to keep going like that. So I found found a boulder to sit on for a few minutes, but you know, it's I think with the right experience, persistence, perseverance, <laughs> the right mindset of just say, staying calm, not getting stressed, acknowledging when I'm tired, but doing the best I can to take care of myself. Even the impossible can be possible. And it's just years of learning and, you know, building fitness and confidence. I um, employed a couple of mountaineering techniques in order to get down in the safest manner possible. I definitely used my trekking poles. I kept my uphill trekking pole um, slightly shorter than my downhill trekking pole, but I also choked down on it. Um, so this is where the grippy part is, but you can also come down here and just grab this part to um, have your hands even. But this trekking pole, since it's uphill, will obviously kind of be like this if you're trying to grab the top of it and that's not a stable position. I used a plunge step technique so instead of stepping onto this ground expecting it to stay put under my foot acknowledging that it was going to move underfoot and just stepping in a way that I kind of built stability from things moving around my foot. I used a French step technique keeping kind of a, a sideways motion and I traversed down the mountain in a lot of spots so I wasn't just coming straight down where it would be a lot steeper I just made my own little switchbacks in a traverse um, that was really what I could do to make it the safest route possible I am really tired <laughs> you know sometimes it's not the matter of how many miles <laughs> on a trip uh, I could have easily hiked 16 miles and been less tired than I am right now. Uh, it's been, I, I don't even know how many miles I came today, maybe just another four or something, but um, they've been tough and very little of them have been on any semblance of a trail. So uh, it's early still. But last night I was shivering during dinner, so tonight I, um, I have some snacks that I didn't eat earlier. I might eat these later if, if I get hungry again, but I'm actually just going to make my dinner right now. That way I know at least I got that nutrition in, and if I go lay down somewhere and, and I'm just feeling too tired, to get out and eat. I can either grab a snack or at least I had my dinner already. So I'm gonna do that now.
I was trying to get a shot and my camera just fell over on the tripod and fell on all this shale. Scratched my lens in two different places. I'm really upset right now. It's been a few minutes. I'm still just sitting here. I'm tired today. I haven't really slept the past two nights. This trip has been physically demanding and mentally taxing. Um, I'm just trying to find the trail. I know it's up there. I, w I was supposed to catch it earlier, but there was this huge rock slide and down trees, and it was just a big old mess. There was no way through that, so I had to drop back down, and now I have to go back up to try to grab the trail. Like I've barely even gone anywhere and it's already past 11. <laughs> and I'm lonely. People ask me that a lot. Like, do you get lonely sometimes? Like, sometimes when it's really hard. Sorry. Now people are going to make fun of me because I'm crying. <laughs> but it's just nice to have a partner sometimes when you're feeling low and it feels hard else can kind of carry the burden for a while. We can take turns like that, but you know, this will make me stronger. I just have to fight through it. Making your dreams come true isn't without struggle. There may be suffering, but through that, strength is gained and achievement is more meaningful because you've come through something. There can be pain and beauty.
morning. I had a excellent night's sleep last night and I feel like a whole new girl. <laughs> what a difference it can make. I actually had a headache yesterday evening, I think just from the fatigue. Um, and then I'm, I'm at altitude here. I'm at about 11,000 feet, so it's significant. Um, so I took 600 milligrams of ibuprofen and put myself to bed early and I knocked out. In fact, I knocked out so hard that the campsite I was staying at is um, just off this Paiute ATV trail. And so ATVs and trucks and things like that can access that campsite. And <laughs> at one point I woke up and um, there were lights shining in my tent and I could hear footsteps and I darted up because I didn't have my bearings of like where I was or anything yet and I grabbed my flashlight and my knife and I was like what's going on who's out there <laughs> and then I, I didn't really hear anything I still saw the light and so I opened um, my little back door to my tent and I saw that somebody else had fully set up their other tent and everything already and um, I was like wow I was really dead asleep because I slept through all of that <laughs> So the objective for this morning is to climb Delano Peak. Delano Peak is the highest peak in the Tisher Mountain range at 12,169 feet. So I calculated that I have about 1,400 feet of climbing this morning, and then it should pretty much be downhill uh, from there. I'm gonna loop back around um, down the Delano Peak Trail, South Fork Trail, catch up with the Bullion Canyon Trail, and that'll take me back down to Miner's Park where I started this epic journey. <laughs> <laughs> 